Welcome back to Mini Manticore Island, the perk build in Jurassic World Evolution 2 that will consist of four vastly different biomes. In the previous episode, we worked on the desert and we made this Spinosaurus habitat with this sort of like new kind of ultra high security fencing. And we're going to be hopping over to <laughs> the cold side of the map because as requested by many, many people, uh, but the first of which being Storm Savage is to make a Uteranus habitat in the snow. And that's what we're going to do because I think that's pretty cool. Oh, and I'm also going to be finishing this guest section over here. Now, one of the hardest parts about making a park, I think you guys know this, um, is just starting somewhere. Just, just starting somewhere is the hardest part. And then you sort of branch out from there. How, <laughs> like the concept for this particular park means that I have to do the hardest part five times over. In this central section, I had to like just make a start and go from there. Uh, in the desert se section, we made our start and we can just go from there. But we still have the temperate, the redwood, and now the taiga biome to like just figure out where to start. And that is so difficult. By the way, I do have videos to give you like tips. <laughs> tips to help you how to start a park so you can check that out on the channel and if you like tips and creative sandbox building videos consider subscribing <laughs> sorry but we are like getting so close to 200,000 subscribers i'll try not to like i'll try not to beg but, <laughs> but we're getting so close <laughs> so yeah that's that's the challenge of this park like just starting somewhere five times over and i think i'm just gonna lean into that and um I'm not going to try to think too much ahead, which sounds like a bad idea, <laughs> but I'm going to try not to think too much ahead and I'm just going to build a really cool Uteranus habitat. I have an idea and we're going to take it from there. Now it's quite a, it's quite a narrow section. All right. Well, here we go, folks. So mm, the idea that I have is... <laughs> In the tried and true tradition of Evolution Square, it's very circle based. <laughs> so I think that's what we're gonna start with, and maybe no, it should it should be it should be quite centralized. I think that's important, and it's gonna be pretty big. It's gonna be by far the biggest habitat here. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be special. I also think that maybe it's not just gonna be Uteranus. There's really no, like, I'll just have to eyeball it. I think this is, uh, I think this might be too big. This is 100% too big. Like, obviously the new tool that we have to uh, to make this happen is superior than how we had to do it in Jurassic World Evolution 1. But sometimes it's just difficult to, like, get to a curve that, like, gets you to the right size circle. Here, because even this one is too big. Like, we will be spanning most of the width of the section, but obviously I do want to leave a little bit of space. All right, this this might be it. This might be our winner. This is our winner. There you go. What was that? The, the third try? That would be very poetic if it was the third try. I say poetic. It's more cliche, but you know. What's the difference, really? English majors discuss. <laughs> and we're taking it to there. So, yeah, that's um, that's one big honking habitat right there. It's not going to be all habitat. What I'm going to do is about yay wide. Take it from there. Oh, hold on. That's going to be difficult, isn't it? So we'll do one, two, three. Let's do four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have no excuse, okay? Just no excuse. By the way, I'm actually building off a reference. Like, in the... Speaking of, like, Evolution Square traditions. <laughs> I find inspiration in the weirdest places. I find inspiration pretty much everywhere. And the inspiration for this habitat comes from a book that I'm currently reading. Which is so freaking random, but I like it. Uh, the book and the randomness of, of it all. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll reveal a little bit later what the inspiration actually is. And it's, uh, it's super random. <laughs> okay, now I think there's gonna be like entrances on both sides. And I think I want the first entrance, like the main entrance, to be visible from here. 
So I'm going to take this. And again, this is just going off like the reference, right? So I'm going to make like a little bulbous thing over here. That's not going to that's not going to work out ideally, is it? Oh. You know what? Fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's like a little Oh, dang it. It needs to be like a like a like an opening obviously. So, like that. Is that about center? That's about center. So that's our entry. Oh, he won't. Oh, he just won't snap. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I didn't want you to anyway, so <laughs> that's so fine. This is like all part of the plan. Maybe. Actually, I could. Oh, hold on. This will be this will be the wrong one because we're also like going for the separation in terms of like building things, building things like building styles, building eras. I could do this. It is. It is big. It's oh, it's bigger than anticipated, actually. <laughs> Probably should have whipped out a building sooner, shouldn't I? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's gonna. This is gonna. This is probably gonna be the biggest carnivore in this section. So that's fine. Let me shop around. See if there's something else I can do with this. Something. Something cool. I don't see anything cool. Oh. Look, I'm gonna just preemptively place this here. So I don't forget, because that, that feels like a must. That feels like a hecking must at some point. Otherwise, I'm 100% going to forget. Look, they chucked it all the way down at the bottom. Please, I can't be bothered to scroll that far. Not on a daily basis. Or weekly. There's nothing that sort of, like, resembles... Well, it's the wrong building style, though. <clears throat> it is cool. It is cool. Because this this is the kind this is the kind of building I was, I was looking for. Not gonna lie. Just circular and a little bit of height. I'm like the Goldilocks of buildings over here. But technically, we were gonna stick to DFW in here. And that's just, that's just ugly. That's just hella ugly. <laughs> I feel like I should try and just, just play around with it. I'm sorry, I know I'm like breaking my own rules, but honestly, they're more, they're more guidelines than actual rules. You know, you know. Basically, I really just want, like, the circular bit to show. Because we all know circular bits are the best bits. Oh, it's n it's not going to be able to have a connection. And then we're stuck with the no connection point notification forever. Because right now there's, like, right now there's hope of it someday being gone. <laughs> but if I do this, it will never be gone. <laughs> oh... Why do I make things more difficult for myself? No, no, no. I don't do this to- Frontier does this to all of us. This is Frontier. They're evil schemes. <laughs> I don't know what's- I guess this little- because it's curved? I think I'll do it like that. There, I'll, I'll cover that up with something. That'll- that won't be the issue, really. We can pretend that this is something, right? Like, what is this actually? It's a fossil center. You know what? It could be a fossil center. I don't know why I had to shout that. <laughs> but it could be a fossil center. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'd like to formally apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm not wrong, though. What I mean is, like, as an attraction. You know, the same way we have an attraction that is... I don't know if it's called... It's probably not called a fossil center. It's called the fossil zone. That's what I mean. Because I, I think it needs that. I think it needs something cool right there. So I'm not mad at that. You might be, though. It's good. It's good enough. It's good enough. It's good enough. I spent too much time on this already. Actually, looking at my reference, there's not two entrances. There are three. Like, the main front. And then, beautifully, a little bit off to the side. Now, of course... Even though I'm using it as a reference, that doesn't mean I'm like adhering to it very strictly. Here, so let's do let's do it like that. I think that I think that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I'm using it as inspiration. I have no illusions that I'll I will be able to recreate it accurately, or there's there's even no need for that. It's just fun and helpful to have some sort of reference. Here, we'll take these straight. We'll do my thing that I like to do, which is that. Give it a little bit of oomph. You know oomph. You've heard of her. Oomph has a twin. Oh, probably gonna whip out a bit of monorail. Because you know how I am. <laughs> Look. I have no excuse, okay? I'm, I'm not even, like, trying to hide it. I have, I have embraced it.
I've not made this easy for myself. Yeah, I mean, I know how people feel about the monorail stuff, but I, it needs drama, okay? Drama. I might even... Oh, God. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> I can't even pretend otherwise. Uh, I'm sorry. Here, let's see how that works out with the pillars. Not great. Why doesn't it turn out great? I think if I change the actual entry point, this will be fine. It'll be fine. Why do I make this so difficult for myself? God, I hate myself sometimes. Sometimes. She's funny. She's funny. Oh, God. Sometimes I also hate the game, but that's that's a whole different thing. Let's not linger on that too long, please. For freak's sake. See, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. I'll take it. There you go. There you go. Crisis averted. Maybe not, though. Nope. <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, it worked on that side. <laughs> I'm so close. I can taste it. <laughs> yeah, good enough, she says. Now that we have this, I feel like maybe I should use that. Again, you can tell, like, nobody will ever accuse me of planning anything. Because I don't. <laughs> Here, but like, oh, it wants to snap to the freaking fence. I guess I could get rid of this bit of fence right here if I do this. Oh, that, oh, that worked out pretty well. Look at that. I don't think I could have gotten it much closer. Well, a little bit, but. Oh, I can move it now. Duh, we can move it now. We can do that. Frontier, I love you again. <laughs> it really is that easy for me, okay? There. Nice. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's just plain rude. <laughs> that is needlessly rude right there. Why? Okay, Frontier, I hate you again. <laughs> no, but like, why? Oh my god, why is this- why is this building like, ew, that fence is icky. <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe I'll do it like that. Make it like a little less harsh and we'll curve the- yeah, there you go. There, that's fine. That's what I wanted to do anyway. Here, and then on this side, what I could do, see if that works out. Shop might be too big. What I could do, I could do this. I probably should. Let's let's just do that. I think that'll work out much better. And we're gonna have a viewpoint probably here as well. All right, well, it's, it's getting somewhere. What I kind of want is have like a moat. Because we're like, we're like pretending that even though... Um, Dominion says otherwise, uh, but this is this is one of the things in Dominion that I disagree with <laughs> very strongly. <laughs> um, I don't like like in Dominion we see uh, Pyraptors swimming very efficiently. I personally don't believe in that. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're adding a moat, and now you might be thinking, why are you talking about Pyraptor? You were gonna do Euteranus, yes, but I was thinking about also chucking Pyraptor in here. Give you like a twofer. And what we're gonna pretend, I don't know if that's gonna work out, is that like the Pyraptors are are a little rascally, rebelly teenage uterinus. It's messing with the fence a little bit, but I guess it's not too bad. So this is, uh, this is our ice moat. That might be your first hint as to what my reference is. And what I wanna do is I wanna prevent them from actually walking into the ice moat, cause you know, that would sort of defeat Depeat. It would defeat the purpose. <laughs> would defeat the purpose. <laughs> I hate, I hate myself. So I think if I if I like line it like this, hopefully it'll hide the. Is it deep enough? It is deep enough to hide the invisible fencing, which is that's still kind of bonkers to say. Hide the invisible fencing, but hopefully it will still be enough for them to be able to drink. I think so. I think so. So there you go, we have our ice moat. Now in my reference there should be something in the middle. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to do that. I just realized I've just robbed myself of a viewing opportunity here. I can fix that though. Everything is fixable, except my life. Something that I really like doing with exhibits uh, that have multiple viewpoints is really give people a reason to go to the multiple viewpoints, you know? So that's why like, I'm obviously blocking a lot of the habitat from view for this gallery right here. But that is on purpose. 
so that people would be motivated to walk over here and go to the viewing opportunity that I'm gonna add here that I totally didn't forget about earlier. Here, so something like that. I love the sound that the invisible fences make. It, it reminds me of, uh, oh god, this is an old game. But it reminds me of Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. There's like invisibility and electrical like force field type of technology there, which sort of makes the same sound. Not quite, but close enough. And it, it just really takes me back. There, I'll be able to sneak a path through there. That'll be, that'll be fine. Uh, there. No, do not snap, don't you dare. Well, there. Cool. Yeah. And this is going to give like a completely different view. Ideally, the ice mode would actually, you know, reach closer to this, but we do not live in an ideal world. Let me do this. Bam, bam. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe like that. Yeah, I think, oh, that works out better. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, all right. Well, that's all, folks. <laughs> oh, if only it was that easy. Easy, she says. Oh, I've been struggling with this for half an hour. And I mean struggling as in physically, mentally, emotionally, all of the things. I am 100%, 100%, toying with the idea of completely wrapping it in, uh... I always forget where the monorail is. See, this is why I had to place the amphitheater in advance. I can't even angle the camera. There you go. Because otherwise, she forgets. A few minutes later. Let's, let's look at it. I do like it. I mean, we're going for like a, a thing with the monorails, right? And I have made this point before that it is helpful in terms of like park design to sort of repeat certain elements to make them look less weird on their own. They look more purposeful if you combine them and your park looks more cohesive overall. Now, I know that like the monorail thing is... is, is uh, controversial is too big of a word, but people are definitely split on it. And I get it, I get it. So this is, this is not for everyone, but I do think the game just lacks stuff with height. Five minutes later. Huh. <laughs> now I'm not sure if I like it anymore. I think it'll be better once, uh, you know, we start adding some trees. We're not going to do too much of that. But some trees. Now what we did with, with this stuff, we figured out in the previous episode that with a curve monorail that doesn't work out that great. Uh, but we can add it in like choice sections. I don't know if this is going to work out. It doesn't really look like it adds anything. Should I maybe hold on, let's let's replace these pillars. See if I like that. Nope. No, that was wimpy. It's wimpy. We don't like wimpy. Maybe maybe just like that. Again, for the oomph. Alright, so for path, I was thinking like this this grey predominantly here. Ooh, or maybe this one? No, that's just ugh. No, I think it I think it should be this. This is gonna be awful. Especially if the game does that. See? Snap. Snap. Stupid game. Stupid game. Me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> game, please, I'm begging you. One eternity later. <laughs> the hitboxes in this game are so weird. <laughs> like, why? Just, just tell me why. Tell me why. <laughs> There you go, I can work with that. Here, we can get rid of that little nub right there. It feels so wasteful to get rid of that, that line that I did manage to get nicely. I think I'm just gonna, you know, screw symmetry. We've been over this. Screw symmetry. This is how we roll. There, it just has a line on one side. Because that side's special. Okay, now for trees, we're gonna have to be like, oh, this might be cool. A log is always cool. Let's put, let's put a log right there. Super cool! There, nothing bad ever happened with an open flame within people's reach. 
Okay, now even though we're using like the DFW buildings, mostly, some exceptions apply, I don't want it to feel like something other than a park. It's more like, um, it's just like, it's just a theme section, you know, it's more, it, it's supposed to make you feel like you're out on some sort of arctic expedition, but it's still a park. So we're not gonna like, putting stuff like this around. Um, and if we use stuff like this, we're using it as, like, a scene. Having said all of that, I don't think I want to do that here. Nothing. Ugh. Yellow? Ooh. Obviously, that needs to be, like, an icy blue. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I've never noticed that you can actually see the color during daytime. Maybe because they're, like, in the shadows? Oh, but that's cool. I like that. That's fun. Ah, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Eh? Ha-ha! <laughs> You're gonna get connected. Like, obviously not yet, but you know, in the end. I feel like for once I should strive to make a park that <laughs> has... No, oh, I just realized something. We're probably gonna use, like, the ranger jeep thing at some point, right? Because when don't I? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it gives it gives a little bit more dimension to the uh, to the wall. What I might do, which is gonna cost me a little bit of extra time, but you know, it'll be worth it, is to replace some sections of the concrete wall with wire fencing, so guests can theoretically look into the habitat from different points. There, have like a little bit of a window. What I could even do is I'll probably have, like, uh, other habitats branching out from this. So, alternatively, I could keep this closed and open up something else here. So, guests can look out at a habitat out there. But for now, I'll just leave the, the windows like that. Yeah, I'm gonna just add, just like a... A couple of these things there, and the rest are just gonna be dead. <laughs> Frozen in this wasteland. I feel like doing nothing with trees would be too severe. There, but I, I do think I should literally just keep it like that. Which is difficult for me. Honestly, interestingly, this biome is probably gonna give the same... Um challenge that I did foresee for the desert biome in which you can't really do that much with the exhibit because you want to keep that that desolate look to it you know you, you don't want to overstuff it because you want it to feel just barren even even rocks starts to feel too much I think the the redwood and the temperate habitats are gonna be much more interesting to build I think it turned out pretty cool now, obviously, this is going to branch out further into the park. We're going to have shops on, on these bits as well. So that'll work itself out. I just realized I need to do all of this. And I'm already at the hour mark, which is great. I'm going to have to speed build this part of it. Uh, but as I speed build, I will talk about my reference that I used. Exciting stuff, I know. So one of the things that I get asked a lot on my channel is where do you get your inspiration from? Because obviously I've been doing this for a while now in Jurassic World Evolution 1 and then now Jurassic World Evolution 2. I've built a lot of parks. And I appreciate that you guys think that my ideas are still original and fresh and yeah, I just get the question a lot. Where do you get your inspiration from? And literally everywhere. Um, like sometimes I'll, I'll look up inspiration on Google in terms of like architecture and city planning and stuff like that and I draw from that. But I happen upon inspiration in real life as well, such as the book that I'm currently reading. And that's funny to me because I haven't read a book in a while, <laughs> aside from Jurassic Park, which I like reread every year or something. Um, but yeah, the book that I'm reading right now is Six of Crows and it is people who follow me on Twitter will know this. You should be following me on Twitter. It's a hoot. There, within the story, there is this compound that the characters are gonna pull a heist at. So that compound gets, like, a sketch at the back of the book for clarity's sake. And so while I was, while I was reading that book, it suddenly clicked for me, like, 
hey, I could, I could turn this into a habitat, kind of. Now, obviously, it's not a literal one-on-one -on -one take, and that's the difference between using something as inspiration and literally copying something. I've, I've taken it as inspiration, and stuff like that is just really funny to me, but it's also really helpful that um, I, I think it just goes to show how much Jurassic World Evolution has like infiltrated my mind. That literally when I'm looking at pretty much anything, I can see a Jurassic World Evolutionified version of that in my head. In this, in this regard, I saw the ice court, which is what the compound is called. I saw it as a Euteranus habitat because that's that was the recurring request that people wanted a Euteranus habitat in the taiga biome for the next Mini Manticore video. So that's how that came to be. And I, I personally hope that my videos are a source of inspiration for you, just easily accessible, easily digestible, hopefully, um, like helping you to build your own awesome stuff, you know, give you ideas that you can mix and match in your own ways and either copy or take inspiration from for your own builds. But like as like conceptually try to try to look at stuff <laughs> through the lens of Jurassic World Evolution and you'll see that in your own life you'll also be able to find just the weirdest points of inspiration that can lead to some really cool builds so that, that's that's like a little it's kind of vague advice but I hope that some of you out there out there will be able to do something with that at least you know just like, like for example, if you're reading a book right now, think about that book and Jurassic World Evolution. What can you do with that? That's like a, that's like a fun little exercise. Oh my god, I feel like a teacher right now. I feel like I'm giving you homework. But that's like a fun little exercise. Or maybe, maybe if you're not reading a book, maybe there's a show that you're watching, or you know, what is the most recent movie that you watched, and just think about that for a moment, and think about the tools that we have available in Jurassic World Evolution too, and try to find common ground i guess and i think that will actually be a really interesting like exercise for yourself or challenge for yourself to build something based on whatever book or show or whatever that you're currently obsessed with as i am with six of crows so yeah this is the end result. I'm gonna fly in the Euteranus and the Pyroraptor. Now what I've done is I've given them like white feathered skins because that was one of the suggestions based on the first episode that people were like, oh, you should match like the, the skins to the biome that they're in. Now I don't think I'm gonna do that every single time because I also want to use like the colorful options that we have for the dinosaurs. But for this snow biome, I think it's very cool to go with like camouflaged snow white dinosaur so that's what i went with for uteranus and pyraptor again if you have suggestions for the next episode please leave those in the comments uh i'm gonna say let's do either redwood or temperate so we'll get our start in each of the biomes and then we'll continue to mix it up as we build this park all right thank you so much for watching liking subscribing and until next time enjoy the game